Yes. Thank you. Call uh, Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a uh, pleasure to stand and take a call on the Sentencing Aggravating Factors Amendment Bill and, like my colleagues, simply make the point that it is, of course, it's great to have an opportunity to support those who take on the very hazardous, very difficult roles in our community right. of providing security and safety to the people in our community, something that uh, Minister Finlayson finds enormously humorous, obviously. Um, uh, but these are people who take on a trusted role and a difficult role, and they are entitled at least from the lawmakers of this country, to have a signal of support and confidence. The problem is that until Charles Travell's SOP, this legislation did not have that. This legislation, as um, my colleague Phil Goff has talked about, didn't add anything to the fabric uh, of our uh, criminal law. We have laws already that deal specifically with crimes against uh, certainly police officers, and also prison officers. So, for example, Section 10 of the Summary Offences Act, which is a specific crime of assault against a police officer, um, uh, and also Section 23 of the Summary Offences Act, which relates to resisting either a police or a prison officer. We also have, in addition to the provisions that uh, Phil Goff talked about, Section 98E of the Crimes Act, which also uh, provides for a broad range of aggravating factors as escalating or elevating a particular crime. So that is already there, including in those that the, the regula uh, regulatory impact statement refers to. And it is entirely appropriate. The, the courts should take cognizance of uh, a victim who is a, a serving officer, who is dealing with those who would commit crime, who would um, uh, undermine uh, the fabric of our society and our communities and uh, who should be dealt with and treated accordingly. Um, those who are there to uphold and enforce our laws must have proper uh, protection uh, in the law from the judiciary uh, and indeed from this House. But that was already there. And until this piece of legislation uh, was changed in the committee stages in this House to incorporate protections for other frontline emergency staff, this piece of legislation legislation added nothing. And it is important that when we utilise the important institution that is this House and its time and the time of the people in it, that we actually do something that is meaningful uh, rather than the gesture politics that we've become so used to over the, the last few years. So it is good that uh, that amendment was put up and it is good that the Minister accepted it in good grace, uh, saw the wisdom of it and uh, adopted the change, incorporated it into the legislation. Because those who are dealing with uh, people in the community who, whether they are drunk at the time, whether they are unwell at the time, or for whatever other reason, who become violent and difficult, commit crimes, uh, crimes against the person, and whatever other crimes against those who are there to assist uh, those in need in the community, there must be a signal that those sorts of actions will not be tolerated by the community. There must be a community sanction. And this piece of legislation now does that. Those who are, um, are charged with those important responsibilities of preserving community safety and providing help and assistance, the first response uh, must be afforded that, uh, that protection. Those who are working in our prisons, and let's face it, it's uh, assaults, serious assaults in prisons that have been escalating rapidly over the last few years. I know that um, uh, Jamie Lee Ross and indeed Mark Mitchell talked about the rise in assaults on police officers, uh, but in fact their figures that relate to assaults on prison officers over the same period have been much more dramatic. A 100% increase in assaults on prison officers over that same uh, five-year period. A 120% increase in serious assaults on prison officers over that time. And so while it is good that this legislation acknowledges that and, and will acknowledge in sentencing now that the fact that the victim is a prison officer is to be taken into account, let's not forget and let's not get complacent about the real demand and the real need for prison officers, and that is for good, proper, protective equipment and, and enough prison officers, I might add, too. And it has been the claim of prison officers for some time uh, to be properly equipped, properly, proper protective equipment and other gear that can, de that can uh, assist them to restrain and manage uh, the extraordinarily violent 
uh, criminals who are, who are entering the system, entering the prison system, and are increasingly becoming a problem. And we need to be cognizant of that. Uh, this legislation will send a signal that when it comes to sentencing uh, people who behave in that way in the custody of Her Majesty, at least that might make a difference. But actually, prevention, as we know, is an ounce of prevention is worth a ton of cure, and it might help our prison, often, uh, prison uh, officer population if we actually focused on a bit of uh, prevention as opposed to cure through the sentencing process. So it, it's good that, um, uh, that the legislation, as it now appears before the House, has taken that into account, has also offered greater protection for those who are sent out to preserve life, to pick people up, scrape them up off the roads, uh, to, pr to protect them through the signals, through sentencing, from being assaulted and obstructed and harassed, as they sometimes are, uh, and that there is proper recognition given to the important role that they play and the protection that they are entitled to have when they are going about their difficult jobs. And it was only today, I think today's tabloid New Zealand Herald with the big giant H on the front of it that ran the report about the, uh, the prison star, uh, the, the ambulance officers in Auckland. Um, uh, the lone ambulance officer uh, who was assaulted and confronted and had to push her assailant out of the ambulance and drive to the nearest police station uh, to get protection. And, and she, as a, a lone ambulance officer, simply should not be in that position. So this, as the members opposite have said, hopefully will help. I'd like to think that we bank less on hope and more on certainty, planned certainty, good evidence-based legislation, but this is uh, not a bad piece of legislation in the state that it's in, thanks to the extensions that have now been uh, added into it. Uh, but I simply reiterate the point, Mr Speaker, that um, uh, sentencing those uh, important officials in our community who are victims of crime, sending a signal through the sentencing laws to afford them greater protection is one thing. Putting in place proper measures to provide protection, to provide prevention against assaults and harassment and, uh, and violence uh, would be a much more effective approach and perhaps that might be the next project of this Minister and her colleague, the Attorney-General, when they come to review the laws and the resourcing of our uh, frontline emergency personnel uh, because that must be more important than the, dare I use a pun, the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff that sometimes uh, sentencing laws uh, uh, provide in these sorts of circumstances. So on that basis, sir, as we have said, this legislation in its form now before the House will afford a signal, a strong signal uh, to the courts that this conduct is not to be tolerated against these important people in our community and the legislation will be supported on that basis. I call Mike Saban. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. I'll take a short call uh, just to round off.